Videos show multi-ton steel sections of hundreds of individual steel pieces ejecting out of the towers at 60 miles an hour for a distance of 600 feet. They also show clouds of debris pulverized in mid-air and isolated explosive ejections as many as 60 stories below the so-called crush zone. Videos also show the near total destruction of both towers. What does all this tell us about the forces and energies involved in the destruction? Large, multi-ton beams were hurled hundreds of yards laterally. Gravity works vertically, not laterally. So something's happening to throw these things horizontally at those kinds of speeds. And here it is trailing white smoke the whole time. It, it really is indicative of uh, some kind of explosion. The individual explosions that I noticed 20 and 30 and 40 stories below the collapsing structure. And uh, naysayers tend to say, well, that's just air being blown out the windows. I mean, it doesn't really work to say it's just air pressure. And I estimated these are coming out faster than 100 miles an hour. As an architect, I would expect to see um, larger portions of the building floors, uh, the decking, the steel decking, the concrete topping, much larger remnants of what the structural components of this building was. What happened to the concrete? The concrete was pulverized, and I was down here Tuesday, and it was like you were on a foreign planet. All of Lower Manhattan, not just this site, from river to river, there was dust powder, two, three inches thick. The concrete was just uh, pulverized. You don't need to be an engineer or an architect to see what happened to those buildings. We have a professional responsibility and I urge every engineer and architect and demolitions expert and anybody that has any knowledge in this field to examine the evidence and stand up and be counted because the rest of the world is depending upon us. We know we've been lied to about 9-11. Uh, we don't know for sure who did it. We don't know exactly how they did everything. And that's why we need a new investigation to find out. We do know that there was a massive cover-up, that there was evidence hidden and destroyed. The American people absolutely need the truth of 9-11. took some kind of uh, consciousness raising on my part before I was willing to look at the, the possibilities. And really, you need to go where the evidence leads. Let's look at it objectively, let's look at the evidence, not these fabricated computer models and hearsay and all these predetermined conclusions. Uh, let's really open it up again and um, investigate this thing properly and then come to conclusions. I strongly support a, an independent investigation that would be independent of the government, independent of all of the influences that obviously were in effect uh, during the NIST investigation. What happened on 9-11 is not something that is just going to go away. This is very pertinent to us today. I wish to further the investigation and I want to make a difference because I want this to be a safe and better place for my children. Sign the petition on the uh, Architect and Engineers 9-11 Truth uh, website mainly because I wanted to uh, stand behind the families that lost people on 9-11. Uh, the 9-11 Truth Movement was started by the families uh, that lost loved ones on that day, and they were all out there alone, screaming for help, and our own country was ignoring them and ignoring their needs and not taking care of them the way we should have after that happened. As we know, the horrors of what happened on 9-11 were televised all over the world, and they were televised, in fact, live. We witnessed the deaths of almost 3,000 of our fellow Americans. 
We know this had a very um, s severe and traumatic impact on a large a majority of the population. At this point, we have nine years of hard scientific evidence that disproves the government theory about what happened on September 11th, and yet people continue to be either oblivious to the fact that this information exists or completely resistant to looking at this information. So the question becomes why? Why is it that people have so much trouble hearing this information? From my work, I think we would be remiss not to look at the impact of trauma. Many people respond to these truths in a very deep way. Some have a visceral reaction like they've been punched in the stomach. To begin to accept the possibility that the government was involved is like opening Pandora's box. If you open the lid and peek in a little bit, it's, it, it's gonna challenge some of your fundamental beliefs of, about the world. If we can think of our worldview as being sort of our mental and emotional home, I think all of us will do just about anything to defend our homes, to defend our families. And, and so I see that with people, and I saw that with myself when my brother tried to talk with me about it, of don't mess with me, don't mess with my home, don't mess with my comfort with how things are. And about a week later, I read a lengthy article by Professor Griffin um, about why he believes the official account of 9-11 cannot be true. And it was a very well-researched article. It was in my office at the time. I sat there and I felt my stomach churning. I thought maybe I was going to be sick. And I leaped out of my chair and ran out the door and took a, a long walk around the block, around several blocks, um, and just broke down. I understand now that what was happening was my worldview about my government being in some way my protector, almost like a parent, had been dashed. And uh, it was like being cast out into the wilderness, I think is the closest way to describe that feeling. And I sobbed and I sobbed, felt like the ground had completely disappeared beneath my feet. and. And I knew at some point during the walk that I knew that I was going to have to become active in educating other people about this, that there was, that for me to retain any sense of integrity, I was going to have to take some action. I couldn't just let something like this go. When we hear information that contradicts our worldview, social psychologists call the resulting insecurity cognitive dissonance. For example, with 9-11, we have one cognition, which is what the official story of 9-11, what our government told us, what our media, media repeated to us over and over, that 19 Muslims attacked us. On the other hand, we have what scientists, researchers, architects, engineers are now beginning to tell us, which is that there is evidence that shows that the official story cannot be true. So now we've lost our sense of security. We are starting to feel vulnerable. Now we're confused. When your beliefs are challenged, fear and anxiety are created. In response to that, our psychological defenses kick in and they protect us from these emotions. Denial, which is probably the most primitive psychological defense, is the one most likely to kick in when our beliefs are challenged. And it's a very, very uncomfortable state to be in and eventually our mind shuts off. Just like when a computer is overloaded, our minds get overloaded. We can't handle it anymore and we shut down. And what some of us will tend to do is deny the evidence that's coming our way and stick to the original story, the official story, and to try to regain our equ equilibrium in that way. Another thing we can do is decide to look at the conflicting evidence and be sincere and be open-minded and look at both sides of the issue and then make up our own mind about what reality is. Here are a few of those, of those spontaneous initial reactions to hearing the contradictory evidence about 9-11. I don't want to know the truth or I'd become too negative and psychologically go downhill. I'm not sure I want to know. If this is true, then up would be down, and down would be up. My life would never be the same. Fran, I refuse to believe 
that that many Americans could be that satanically treasonous, someone would have talked. But these are beliefs. They are not scientific facts. But these beliefs do keep us from looking at the empirical evidence. Whenever we say, I refuse to believe, we can be sure that the evidence that's coming our way is not bearable and that it's, going, it's conflicting with our worldview much too much. As I thought about all of these responses, I realized that what is common to every one of them is the emotion of fear. People are afraid of being ostracized, they're afraid of being alienated, they're afraid of being shunned, they're afraid of their lives being inconvenienced, they'd have to change their lives, they're afraid of being confused, they're afraid of psychological deterioration, they're afraid of feeling helpless and vulnerable. And they're afraid that they won't be able to handle the feelings that are coming up. None of us want to feel helpless and vulnerable. My name is Bob McElvey. I'm from right outside the Philadelphia area. And I'm the father of Bobby McElvey, who was killed in the lobby of the North Tower on September 11, 2001. Bobby was one of the first 10 bodies found. We took him home that week. We were one of the few. I finally found the doctor who examined him. All his injuries were in the face, the front of his face, his face was blown off. Massive cuts in his chest and his right arm were blown off. To me, that means explosion. What happened on September 11th was the tragedy where Neil was on flight 175 and it crashed into the second tower. And I can't imagine what happened to him. My brother was my best friend. David has always been a firefighter. My brother went in to save people's lives. I'm a family member trying to find out the answers to the murder of 3,000 plus people. I'm Jane Palacino. My husband Steve was 48 years old when he was killed on September 11th. I have no identification. You know, why is that? It seems to me we should know why over a thousand victims there are no trace for and no identification, no trace of over a thousand victims. Just a few years ago, they were still finding body parts on the roofs of buildings. What is that? We should know why there are over 700 bone fragments found on the top of Deutsche Bank building less than a half an inch long. We should have that information. Why were they up there? Why weren't they found? What kind of explosion was there? And the explosions were brought up many a times, talking to firemen, talking to medics, talking to everyone. Everybody talked about these explosions. I want the officials that are in power to ask the questions. I want answers. Please look at architects and engineers, people all around the world, scientists all around the world are questioning this. When you bring science into the equation, that's so important because you can't argue against science. And there's some deep, deep explaining to do. The bottom line is that it needs to be investigated properly. We will never heal. This country will never, ever, ever forget that day. We have to demand a new investigation. I want justice here.